Welcome to the Unstoppable Real Estate Agents Podcast. I'm your host and real estate productivity expert, Kim Hughes. Join me as we focus on real strategies and implement real solutions designed for you to achieve major success in your business and life while getting you organized. Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about client events. A client event is a appreciation that you host um, for your past clients. This could be any time during the year. This could be any theme um, that you feel that is appropriate for your market. Um, There are two events that I always recommend. One is a client event for your past clients and those that you may be currently working with. So you might be currently working with a seller or a buyer that you feel would be a really good fit for your client event. So go ahead and invite them if you want. Then you want to hold a second event, and the second event is going to be for the businesses in your community. Now, these are going to be your local businesses, not the chains, not the big box stores, but local. So think of your um, plumbers, your electricians, your bankers, your mortgage lenders, your insurance agents, um, the local mom and pop restaurants, um, you know, just anybody that may have referred to you from these businesses or just do the event to kind of come together so that they will in the future because you're showing your appreciation for them. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is talk about the client events because that's probably most likely what everybody is doing or would like to do. So when you do decide to put on a client event, the first thing you want to look at is what kind of event do you want to host and what time of the year do you want to host it? You know, so I'll give you some examples as we're talking. So this can kind of give you some ideas of, you know, if somebody's already doing something and you don't want to be too many people in the same community doing the same event, then this will spark some ideas for different events. And um, these could be unique to you as those that are doing other events are unique to them. So let's kind of talk about the logistics first. So first of all, like I said, you need to pick the event and the time of year you want to host it. And then what are you going to have to do for that event to be successful? So first thing you're going to do is look at your past clients, make a list of those, make sure you have their email, their physical address, and their phone number. Then you want to go in and just define the goals for the event. So, you know, of course, the goal is is to show appreciation for them referring to you or buying or selling through you. But you also want to get information from them. So, and I'll reference to the very first time I did an event with a client that, um, well, it was for her. It was her first event. And as we walked through it, she, it was just phenomenal. So, um, kind of think about when they arrive at the event, do you want them to update their contact information? Now, you can do this on, you know, a piece of paper and put it on a clipboard and however many people are coming, that's how many forms you have. And then you have them all fill that out with a pen and then you take it back to the office and you input it into your CRM or update your CRM. Or you can have your iPad or your laptop available and have them update their information on a form there that you can just import into your CRM. And you might have a person to help you, whether it's, you know, maybe you have a teenager that is that would be able to help you, a neighbor, um, maybe one of your assistants, your spouse, you know, a friend, you know, whoever you feel that could be in that position to be um, engaging and not be shy, you know, or anything, but, you know, be very upbeat, be very engaging so that they are easy to get the information out of, okay? So there's there's the first part of it. And then you want to kind of look at it and think, you know, what do you want to appreciate them for? Because you're going to have to talk to them. <laughs> and so you kind of need to outline, you know, it's because they have done business with you, referred to you, etc. So then um, 
you know, you need to look at your venue. So you've got your theme, you've got your date, now you've got to look at venues. And you might even look at venues with a couple of dates in mind because things fill up about a year in advance. So I would highly recommend that if you're going to do something at a venue to start immediately to see what's available, what's within your budget, and what can hold the amount of people you're going to invite and make sure it's available when you want to do it. So you might have two or three venues in mind. Um, If you're going to host it at your house, of course, just put the date on your calendar and make sure it works with your family. And you might even, you know, let your neighbors know that you're going to be doing this and, you know, and, and invite those neighbors to it as well, because you're appreciating them um, allowing you to have this party that may disrupt the, the traffic and everything. Okay, so then um, you need to look at your guest list, which we've already talked about, but make sure that that CRM of past clients has the first name, the last name of all the parties involved that are coming to that event from that one household, whether it's a family event or just an adult event, ad- adult event, um, whatever you may want to do it, but you've got to make your guest list because you need a head count. And then you again want to make sure that you have their first name, their last name, their email address, and their phone number. And um, if you think that that information needs to be updated, this is a great time to reach out to them and say, hey, I'm getting ready to um, put on my client event. I want to make sure I have your correct information because I want to make sure you get my invitation by mail. And then you kind of build it from there. Then, um, at, so as you're doing this, no, so let's just talk about, because everybody pretty much knows about the Thanksgiving pie event. You do that the Saturday before Thanksgiving. You know, some people will order from a local bakery uh, to help that local bakery because they're a local business. Or you can go to Costco or you can go to Sam's, you know. So whatever is going to, you know, appeal to you and your, your guests, that's what you want to do. So with the client event for Thanksgiving, so this is going to pretty much be the same thing you do for every event, and we'll tweak it a little bit. But I'll kind of give you a highlight of how a Thanksgiving event goes. So we usually start around the first week of September, and we start getting everything ready. Like I said, we plan, the, you know, where are we going to have the pies, who's going to furnish the pies, who's going to pick up the pies, where's our guest list, etc. And then you want to start putting everything together in September. So you want to send out your invitations, you want to create your emails, you want to create your videos, you want to create your labels, you want to make sure your database is organized. Um, And if you have any vendors that are going to be working with you on the event, you need to reach out to them to secure their day. And then, um, you know, about mm, maybe at the end of September, um, I would say maybe mid-September at the end of September, this is when you start sending out your invitations. So this could be just a postcard. You know, don't feel like it has to be like a big, you know, introduction invitation. So you would want to send maybe a jumbo size postcard and it's talking about the event and, you know, it's going to put the location, the time, that, you know, so, so let's say Saturday before Thanksgiving from nine to one at, um, my local office or at the nursery or at, uh, the bakery, wherever it is that you want to set up to make sure your pies are handed out. You know, maybe you hand deliver those pies, you know, everybody can do it any way they want. I always recommend that if you have less than 20 clients, then you might even think about just delivering those pies. And that's a little extra bonus to those clients to show your appreciation. But then, you know, you can also do the 20 people coming to your event because there's 20 people that can all get to know each other and um, hear each other's testimonials about how you helped them and move forward. And then that will just even make them more excited to refer you. So always look at both sides, you know, not just what's convenient, but the benefits of how you're doing it. Um, That is where you're going to be a success. Now, what I'm going to recommend is that you send out that postcard and you're going to give them a link and on that postcard. So they may go to thanksgivingpieevent.com. And they're going to go to a form, which you're going to set up in Google, and it's going to take them to the form. It's going to give them all the information, the type of pie that they can choose from. Usually it's two. 
Um, you know, we always say cherry and apple, but you can do blueberry. You can do coconut cream pie if you want to. So it's really whatever you want to do. Keep your budget um, intact, though. So for a lot of people that do the Thanksgiving pie or any type of pie event, they usually go to Costco's or Sam's and they order them in advance. And so that's because they're not expensive. You're going to pay, well, in today's world, you may pay anywhere from 10 to $15 per pie. But I'm going to tell you, those pies are huge. And so I think you're getting your money's worth. They're delicious. And I think you'll be real happy with them. But again, always talk to your local bakery. They may can do it better and do it for less because you're working with them as a, as a local business and not a big box store. Okay, so then, um, so you've got your Google form and you can even use SurveyMonkey, um, you know, whatever you can do to take the information down. That's why I always say Google Forms or SurveyMonkey is always a good way to do it. But if you're tech savvy and you want to create your own form and put it on your website, you go for it. Um, you can do it in MailChimp too, I believe. Then we want to, send, so in the postcard, you're going to send them, you know, send it out with the time, the date, the location, RSVP, because if you do not RSVP, you have no idea how many pies you're going to order. So make sure that you do that. And then when those RSVPs go to that website, they fill out that form and you get an email, then now is where you need to start separating your database. So you're going to have a database that has RSVP'd and you're going to have a database that has not. And those that have, they should get an email saying, thank you for, you know, your RSVP. Um, you know, whatever you want to say. If you want to say, you know, we have your order, we look forward to seeing from you, etc. Then for those that have not RSVP'd, you're going to re send them reminders through email now. They get a postcard in the mail. Everybody gets that. But now everything is communicated through email. It, it's a, a budget thing. You know, you're saving money. So make sure you set up all your emails and they should go out, you know, once you start seeing people RSVP, usually they do it within a week. You want to start prompting those that have not. And I would say send one once a week up into, you know, the day that you order. And you need to give them a deadline, you know, RSVP by and put the date and the time, you know, um, you know, October 13th at five o'clock, you know, and then once that deadline comes, then you cut it off. Okay, so you have reminded them once a week, you've already got your RSVPs that jumped on it. Now what you're doing is you're putting that whole order together. So a couple of little tips to give you is create some shipping labels that stick on. So when you pick up your pies, you can just lay that shipping label on top of the pie box and it would have your logo, your information. Thank you so much for all of your support. You know, I really do appreciate you, etc. You know, whatever you want that shipping label to say, because when they go home, you want that box to be sitting there for people to see when they serve it uh, to their to all their guests. Then you want to take maybe one or two business cards and just slide them into the side of it. Perfect reason to hand out business cards, you know. So do a couple of those little things. Um, those are very successful, believe it or not. And if you want to even take the time, you can write down the name of the client on the back of the card, you know, their last name, something like that. And then that way, when somebody calls you, you can say, well, how did you hear from me? Oh, well, I, it was a referral. Oh, really? Do you have my business card? Oh, yeah. Sue gave it to me. On the back of it, do you have a name? Yes, and then you can confirm that Sue referred you and send her a thank you gift for doing that. Whether they close or not, you send a thank you. Thank you card or something. And then, um, you know, now when you are coming up on the event, so you want to make sure you're doing videos. Um, do videos going to get the pies. Take videos of you picking up the pies and putting them in your car. And then take pictures and video of the actual event. So when people do come, you know, you're walking around, you're greeting and you're meeting and everything, and you're having somebody videotape, you're having somebody take photos. You do not have to spend a lot of money on this. They do not have to be professional. But, you know, if you have a teenager, they probably can do pictures and they most likely can do video. Or you know somebody that can. And you might even say, 
Um, you know, if they are a business, you might say, hey, you know, I'll give you full recognition of being the photographer and the videographer at the event. You know, so there's a lot of ways that you can, you know, maybe barter, get a discount, something like that. Um, so keep that in mind, because on the day of the event, you do not want to be tied up doing anything. You want to be handing out pies, shaking hands, and giving hugs, and talking to people. So I always say have two or three people there that can help you, you know, spouse, kids, whatever. Um, and that will allow you not to be running around and neglecting your guest. I mean, you're the host. You've got to be there to talk to them. And, you know, not just talk about real estate, but talk about, hey, what are you doing for the holidays? And, you know, how was your summer? And, you know, how was your, um, you know, Halloween? Whatever that is that you can talk to them about. And then it's always a good idea to also kind of refresh in yourself on their social media. So if you are following your past clients, which you should, you can go back and look like in the last month and see what they've been up to because if they've had a baby, a grandchild, you know, kid started college, kid graduated, got married, moved off to a new job, went on missionary work, whatever that can be, you can make a little note of it. And when you're at the event, you can bring it up. And that is a great way to show people that you really do care. Okay. And that goes a lot when you, sh when you have information on people that they don't expect you to have. All right. So now let's say the event is over, everybody showed up, um, everybody got their pies and they left, and now you're cleaning up and you're going home, and within the first week, you need to send out thank you cards by mail. Not an email, not an e-blast, but a special thank you for coming to my event. And you handwrite it, you um, hand address it, and then you mail it. And I'm gonna tell you what, if you do that, that's going to make another huge impression on your past clients, showing that you took the initiative to take five minutes. Whether you feel like people today really want a thank you card, of course they do. Everybody wants to be appreciated for whatever it is that they've done. Um, it's very important that you do that. And then, you know, put them in your database, make sure you update that they came and what did they RSVP? So if they got an apple pie this time, you'll know that they probably will do apple the next time. That doesn't mean that they will. It's just a possibility. So you can kind of look at your numbers for the next year. Now, let me give you another few tips. So if you're a first-time agent or you've been in the business for about five, six, seven years and you don't have a huge database, don't worry about it. Like I mentioned before, you can either hand deliver or just have a quaint little get-together maybe at your home, um, maybe at the office, you know, if y'all have a brick and mortar. Um, again, find a location that might suit what you're trying to do. Um, I also will tell you that if you have, you know, let's say, for example, you invite a hundred people, you send out a hundred postcards to past clients referrals, and you had, let's say, 50 RSVP. So, okay, so you invited a hundred, 50 or have RSVP'd, and then you go out and you buy your pies, and I always recommend that you buy a few more, maybe five of each one, just in case, because sometimes people forget that they didn't RSVP, and they'll show up. So then, at the event, you've got a little more than you need, but let's say that 50 people that RSVP'd, say only 15 showed up. Don't worry about it. That's 15 people that showed up. Don't look at the big number. Look at the people that actually came and gave you their time. So it's not a true write-off. So what you want to do is after that event, you take your pies and you can either call those people that RSVP'd and didn't show up and say, hey, I, I bet you got busy, you know, didn't get to come by. I'm more than happy to drop this off. And if they would like that, then do it. But if you don't want to go through all that trouble, then take those pies and take them to a food pantry, your nursing home, your church, um, you know, any place in town that would take them. And I would suggest that you probably work that out before you do it. Um, just say, you know, let's say you're going to donate them to your church. 
um, or, you know, because they're having a big church luncheon or something like that. Then you might want to call and say, hey, if I have pies left over from my event, would y'all like them? Yes or no? Um, the food pantry, ask them. You know, there's going to be charities in the area that are going to be putting on luncheons for the homeless, for the needy, etc. Find out who that is and the pies that you have left over, you donate those to them and you can write it off. I mean, you're going to write it off anyway because it's an event. So now that I've walked you through the whole thing and you have had the event and now you're at home, you've sent out your thank you cards within the first week. Then let's talk about the business to business event. Now, a lot of people don't do this. And so this is a great way to get to know your local business owners. And that way you can refer to them. They can refer to you. The same process is just doing it business to business. So it could be where you might do, um, you know, a wine tasting at a local a winery or a brewery or, you know, a local restaurant. Maybe you do it at your home. Have it at a venue and have it catered. Don't feel like you have to spend a whole lot of money because the whole point of this is to get to know your local businesses and thank them for being a local business and if they have referred to you. But the whole point is you've got to get them to RSVP. Harder to get the businesses to do it than it is the um just a regular past client. So you got to get kind of creative on how you're going to do that. Um, Now let's talk about different types of events because there's a lot of agents that do Thanksgiving events and I think they're great and people love them. I don't care what anybody says. Every client that I know that does them loves it and they just have a huge success with it. They don't always have it at first, But as they grow it every year and you stay consistent because people like consistency, they're going to get used to it and they're going to remember, oh yeah, oh yeah, you know. And so don't feel like you have failed because you haven't. If you're a first time, second year, third year doing this, keep doing it because your numbers will grow. I promise you that. (laughs) I have seen it over and over and over again. So again, let's talk about different events. So if you wanted to do a client event and you don't want to do the Thanksgiving pie, then do a fall festival. Um, Find the local people that are doing a fall festival and maybe set up a little photography area where you can get with your local photographer, set up a photo op, and then send out invitations to your past clients and tell them, you know, hey, we're doing photo ops at the fall festival. This is where we're going to be located. Please, please RSVP so we can give you a time slot and go from there. Um, that's a huge success. Come get your pumpkins. You know, a lot of agents can do pumpkin patches as well. And you can do it with your nursery and they can come pick them up from the nursery. So there's your venue. You have your thank you gift. And that's something everybody will enjoy. Plus, the business owner could also offer a discount to any of your past clients that come and pick up a pumpkin, but then they go shopping for other things within the nursery. Um, Movie day. Um, I have had agents where they rent a theater and two screens and one screen. They have a family, um, you know, oriented movie. And then they have another screen that is not for children, you know. So um, because not everybody may want to bring their kids or may not have their kids or their kids are grown and gone. So always think about the dynamics of your audience and um, plan appropriately. I have also seen it done at an agent's home where they just had a little get together with some, you know, hors d'oeuvres and some cocktails, picked up their whatever it is you want to give them, a pie, an ornament, whatever that is. And then there you go. Um, Some other ones that we have seen, this is a really good one, Um, July 4th, okay? So, you know, families come together on July 4th. So why not do a pie event for July 4th and do blueberry and cherry and apple or just blueberry and cherry. You know, that would be a great thing to do um, because nobody's doing it in July. And so when you have these family get togethers, they're going to love that. So it's just think of it in July instead of in Thanksgiving. Um, You can also do, um, I've seen agents do where on in May, Mother's Day, 
um, they do an event at the nursery and it's, you know, so, you know, showing off your mom, you know, and appreciating your mom, come and do a photo event. Let's get your pictures made with your mom. You know, of course, moms love having their picture made with their families. And while they're there, the mom will work with, you'll work with the nursery. The mom will pick up her little flat of flowers or maybe a pot, um, maybe some, you know, indoor plant, outdoor flowers, something like that. Um, I have seen agents do barbecues. I've seen um, taking them to a professional um, um, sports event, baseball, football event. You're going to have to get a little bit niched because football is going to, and baseball too, they're very expensive. But, you know, if you go to the baseball game, you don't have to sit behind home plate. You can buy 50 tickets and probably be up, you know, maybe over in right field, left field, something like that. So think about all the things that you would like to do because I want you to enjoy it as well. So as you do that, um, you'll get excited and you'll stay excited. So another one is maybe um, breakfast with Santa, uh, breakfast with the Easter Bunny, get your picture made with Santa, get your picture made with the Easter Bunny, Um, maybe host a New Year's Eve party, maybe offer to pick up people on New Year's Eve and drive them home. You know, there's there's so many things that you can do that will appeal to your audience. And I think that if you really put a little bit of thought into it and plan it out, the first one may be a little, you know, okay, you know, got to figure that one out, you know, um, but have fun with it. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be over the top. It's just one of those things where people are appreciated. I had a client that they dress up in um, chef's apron, chef hats with their logo on it. People drive up, they hand them the cake, they drive off, (laughs) you know. So you can, and then I've had them where they come in, they have apple cider, hot chocolate, whatever is appropriate to the weather you have, and go from there. So there's a ton of things that you can be doing. You just need to pick one. And when you do that and you set it in place, you know, I think that's where you're going to start really getting excited to show your appreciation. And then those that have worked with you or referred you, they feel that they have been appreciated. So let's think about that. And um, we want to just make this holiday season go great, whether it's all year round, whatever month you want to do it in, just pick one and go with it. And if you have any questions, we're always here to help you. Um, We work with our agents on this all the time. We always laugh and say we can do everything but pick up the pots and help you deliver them. (laughs) So if you have any questions, we would love to talk to you. And if you enjoyed this podcast, it would really mean a lot to us. If you would like it, subscribe, leave a comment, and share it. It really helps us grow, and we are very excited about the growth of this podcast. And if there is a topic that you would like for us to talk about, then please let us know that as well. So go out, have a great day, and I wish you all the best with your client event. Bye.